Gabriel's Gospel Grace, changing lives and kingdom building one stone at a time. Hello and good evening to you and welcome to another Tuesday episode. This week we have one of our favourites back already, it's Andy and Kirsty joining us again all the way from the Isle of Lewis. And hopefully we're going to maintain a good signal this time and keep the audio and the picture up to a good standard for you all. Now since we last saw them, it's going to be interesting to have a catch up and see how things are going, so let's not waste time, let's bring them straight in. Hello to you two, how are you? Good day. Hello, we're doing well. Welcome back. I'm going to say we are having a few picture issues, but that could be my end because we're actually due uh, a thunderstorm any time. So uh, I know last time it was at your end, but uh, fingers crossed we'll get through this. So it's been a while since we saw you. Um, how's life uh, on the uh, small holding? I suppose best way of putting it. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's uh, they call it a croft up here. And a croft. It's, uh, kind of a, a unique setup for crofting. Um, Unlike small holdings where you probably own the land, uh, crossings are kind of strange rental agreement where you buy the rights to use the land but never really own it. But what have we got since we last spoke? Did we get the turkeys? Did we have turkeys the last time no. we spoke to you? No, last time we spoke, yeah. you just you just got your, your little piggies. Did we get pigs then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got turkeys. Few turkeys, uh, well, three turkeys, uh, hatched 11, 11 chicks, and wow. six ducklings. Oh, that's great. And are these sort of aiming for sort of the whole uh, Thanksgiving slash Christmas period? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> um, depends, on, depends on how quick they grow. Uh, if they, you know, if they're getting too big for the oven, then it'll be. Well, the just, freezer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that it's a limitation. Yes, I can promise you it won't get in my little freezer. Um, but out, out of curiosity, though, because obviously we have the Watchman program looking at prepping and stuff like that. Uh, most of the animals you have, is most of the feed grown on the land? Is that something you're aiming to do going forward, or is it something you have to sort of buy in? Um, well, um, no, I, I mean, obviously, obviously, in terms of sheep. Um, there's pasture we own, um, which we're going to be improving as the years go on, and that's um, that's one purpose of pigs is to turn and try and take out all the perennial weeds, you know, the the yep. rhizomious um, species. Um, we're going to be sowing uh, stubble turnips and forage rape um, for a, a winter feed, but in terms of things like barley and Grains. Grains. Um, we don't. We don't really have the the wherewithal, the means to do that. You know, um, yeah. everyone who used to do it and cut it with a scythe. Um, but there was a totally different lifestyle then, and there was ten children in every family, and there was the the, the bodies to do it. You know. But who yeah. knows? Who knows what leads us in well, the future? Mm -hmm. We're looking at options and how uh, yeah. how we can manage those kind of mm -hmm. things locally well, I mean, um, yeah. well as as we know politically there's a drive towards sustainability and i think individually i mean that's part of watching wednesday is about how we can become more sustainable ourselves but interesting because i think that nicely leads into our topic theme for today um which is friendship now of course traditionally you guys would be in the position where you're growing and providing what you have but I might be on the other side of the mainland and I've got the opposite. I've got loads of grain. And of course, this mm -hmm. is where trading started. And, and before markets and things would have existed, it wouldn't just simply be you've got the goods I require. It would have probably started with relationships and friendships. It wouldn't just be a trade. In fact, you, you learn to get on with each other because you're going to meet each other's demands. And this really is the foundations of communities. Um, mm -hmm. And from them communities, of course, would come more marriages. So... <laughs> So what I want to start with is, uh, I know we heard about friendships previously, so I think let's start with a little bit of that. Let's start with after you got married, the kind of friendships you had then, were they all ch childhood friendships or were these sort of friendships since you've been Christians or since you've come together? 
honey? Yeah, I mean, so I've been living on Lewis for its 20 years next year. So wow. I was 16 years old when I moved up here. So that kind of the pre that age group, you've kind of lost touch with somewhat. I mean, Facebook and social media and things are, are great for keeping up, but it's not really, uh, you can't pick up the phone and have a conversation with somebody. You're, you're kind of going out your way to meet up with people who you knew were way back when. And when you do go and meet them, you you find out just how the things that you might have had in common, they're, they're nostalgic now. You know, it's, it's a way back in the past and uh, mm. you don't really have those same connections as you maybe once did. I well, mean, so I think... Similar- yeah, Sorry, I think that's. I'm going to say I think that's amusing because obviously when I, you know, I actually moved to Scotland four years ago, and I remember a lot of goodbyes, and people then seemed a bit surprised and like, well, why, why are you saying goodbye? You know, we'll have Facebook, we'll have email and everything. And the analogy I gave was, um, I said, do you watch EastEnders? And they said, yeah. I said, I think you'll find there's probably about a hundred characters, but you'll never see them all at the same time on screen, and the storylines won't track them all. I said, I can't go to a new place and start new friendships and relationships and maintain the ones in the past. And like you said, the, the sad thing at that time is to also point out to them that we shared a history together. We're not sharing the future together. And I think that in itself is interesting about when you look at the, the marriage relationship, friendship, is whether you get on or not at this point, it's probably more important to know whether you're going to be able to get on together in the future and i think covid i know that came up on uh, another interview with uh, leslie and john um i don't think we managed to cover it in the interview but the covid period was actually a good test for people's marriages and a lot of marriages were built on very poor foundations so during lockdown being with your so-called loved one um, became a bit of a challenge for some people whereas for others that's where where they thrived so so from that point of view obviously you you kind of you had to let go of past relationships um to kind of embrace the future i'm guessing is what you're saying i think that's a natural progress in life um anyway i was, I was about to say even folks who i might have been around a lot in my latter teens we rarely keep up <laughs> anymore despite having common um interests in church and youth groups and bits and pieces like those relationships to kind of have their time and season, as it were. But I think for myself anyway, my deepest friendships have probably been with people older than myself anyway. Um, I don't know if I've been a bit of a old head on young shoulders or just prefer the company of older people where um, I, I seem to have a lot of mums and dads in a kind of <laughs> sense of people who have taken me under wing and adopted me in that kind of, way and um, really valuable inputs um, and people who I really cherish and really love. And especially we're seeing, um, you know, some of the older folks we associate with as well, like they're, they're getting on a bit, <laughs> you know, I and mean, it makes you cherish them all the more because you're like, mm. they're, they're there. I don't have any grandparents left um, in my family. So I really value Andy's grandparents um there's a, a grandmother alive on both sides of his family and i'm like oh they're just so precious and really cherishing those relationships for what they are because they are beautiful mm-hmm. and what about you andy how how's friendships evolved for you uh i used to i used to have uh, people about um but as life's changed a little bit, um, sobered up, etc. I I don't, um, I don't keep in touch with anybody I used to, um, you know, work like work related when I used to fish and um, be all around the country and up north and uh, I don't keep up with anybody. Um, I I'd, I'd say, um. My friends are the people who are in front of me at the time, and I'm fellowshipping with. Um, do you know there's there's nobody on my phone or anything like that. Um, nobody who I need to catch up with as such. It's my brother, my mother, my kids. You know, um, and then yeah. just uh, most uh, most uh, 
my people would be church people, um, and who I'm with at the time. Um, but again, I've not got many of them on my phone. You know, I don't, I don't feel the need to. Oh my word! Um, um, uh, um uh, what, what's the word when you're, you know, you're? I'm needing a hit. I've got to phone somebody. Oh, no, or text somebody or um whereas, yeah. whereas uh, my dad used to joke that i could make friends in an empty house mm -hmm. so uh, I, i'm everyone's best mate when i meet them <laughs> i'm gonna say i mean obviously from andy's point of view i mean crofting that time with animals and I, I find that you know i live on my own in the middle of nowhere and in fact there's there's one sparrow which um i'm sure i'll bring up in, in reference later at some point in another episode but this one is boldly stepping out it's actually at the point when I opened my door the other day, it literally flew and landed at my feet to say, what have you got for me? And I, I'm, I'm so pleased. I mean, I know we're going to talk about, you know, loving father and everything else, but there is that kind of, this one's bold enough to step forward. So I actually have relationships with the nature around me and obviously on your croft. I mean, you've got the same kind of thing, I'm guessing. But it also shows though that are we always just putting people in a place just to fill the void? I mean, that's what you've just implied there, Andy, that everyone else has a void that needs filling you've not got that void and I, I can relate to that that there is this kind of i don't need i mean i hear everyone telling me and i sympathize with people i'm sure there's viewers now that struggled with lockdown mm -hmm. i didn't sorry mm -hmm. to say I, I didn't in fact re-acclimatizing to people has been a little bit more of a challenge than i expected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also when it comes to friendships i mean i, I think i previously mentioned this um but more so, especially in olden times, friends were quite rare to be defer well, referred to as friends. What was more common then was acquaintances. So people at the church would be acquaintances. Neighbours would be acquaintances. People you'd probably do sports with would still be acquaintances. But I think since Facebook, everybody you know who actually isn't against you is a friend. <laughs> and I think this is kind of skewed society's view of what is friendship. But I think... You're right, Andy. There is this sort of sense of this just happened. I need to tell someone or they grab the phone now and quickly shoot it to stick on Twitter or YouTube. And and it's not a foundation to move forward with, is it? It's not. And I know that. I mean, we're going to come straight on to I know who fills your life. And in fact, we'll go straight for it, Andy. You know, who fills your void? Who fills my void? Uh, number one is to be large. Amen. Um, and um. All I need, uh, all I need, people-wise, I have. You know, um, I mean, for three hundred and odd days of the year, it's only Kirsty. But then, when uh, I don't even see the kids, the other sixty. But anyway, it's um, the other time I get to see the kids, it's them. And of course, they're always there. And um, you know, it's not as if I don't think about them. But I have everything I need. Um, so yeah, um, and as I said, when we're fellowshipping or uh, church or a prayer meeting or uh, if, we're out, if there's like a music event or a Christian music event and we go, you know, those people at that time, it's wonderful, um, but I don't need to see them tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Just, just Kirsty. Um, and I don't need to see the Lord tomorrow because he's in me, he's with me. He's, you know, he's, there's not a minute goes by that. Uh, we're not seeing them, so. And I'd rather you not be seeing him face to face that quickly. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, but to yeah. talk about, um, you know, lockdown and things. Of course, we weren't we weren't married whilst lockdown was going on, um, and I had very very recently started living by myself. Um, my <laughs> sisters had been living in the house with me beforehand, Sammy for a good number of years, and I was sister Bex before that. And uh, my parents, they moved away from the island here when I was 19 years old. So I tell everyone at 19, I kick my parents out rather than vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, a bit of a culture shock anyway, when you suddenly have the space to yourself. Mm -hmm. But then to be thrown into a situation where you you can't even go and be sociable. And I'm very sociable um, in general. Um, mm -hmm. Like, that would have been a real struggle, except the Lord had already, I mean, engineered our relationship, if you like, at the time. And I think I would have been, I I, I was struggling a little bit anyway, mm -hmm. uh, with the 
not really being allowed in each other's house and all that kind of nonsense but we found ways and means to, <laughs> to work around that um but it would have been a real struggle without our relationship during that time for me personally so it's all right who who really did feel lonely in that time mm -hmm. and actually that was one of the things that i felt the most awful about the situation not so much that people were getting sick because sickness happens but that people were being forced apart in that mm. time when everything in me goes no if somebody's sick you should be alongside them to help yeah. them to serve them mm. and you think of flu epidemics in you know the 1920s and <laughs> earlier 1910s um where people would actually give up their that they give up everything to be volunteer nurses to open up veins <laughs> to look after sick people to be alongside and put themselves in harm's way in order to see other people getting better and just how that whole thing has reversed in these in our times it was quite yeah. shocking and i me. think society's you know talking to other people this last week uh, society has shifted its value of relationships is changes and and clearly there's a, a more adopting technology as a solution to replace relationships um, and i think it's because people felt that relationships got broken uh, and like you said it, ironically they were forced conditions that broke relationships but i think people lost faith in people now because people that they believe to be friends or close family turn their backs on them for having different beliefs or not standing by them and yeah i mean it's there's a definite change in society but coming back to yourselves in that same scenario obviously kirsty you said you've, you're very social you kind of thrive with people but that's when your relationship your, your courting was going off did because i do talk about this with marriage and relationships so i believe that you know your marriage is with your best friend and even sometimes i think because i you know i know a lot of people from different cultures especially where main arranged marriages happen and even their parents I spoke to back in the past. And they said when they met, um, they they didn't know what they wanted and their parents did. But in time, they, they realised it was the right person for them and their friendship started. So interesting that in a lot of arranged marriages, sometimes it still follows this path very logically that they meet as strangers, knowing they're going to get married. But the friendship and that bond starts first. And then the rest comes next. So in a way, you were kind of in that position where you were bonding. Everyone else mm -hmm. was cut off. Did that seem enough for you, Kirsty? Because obviously with Andy, it was. And if anything, I think he'd find it, he found it probably more of a blessing to have someone special in his life. Whereas for you, you were used to lots of people instead of just one. Um, I think it's, it's different dynamics with all your different relationships. I mean, my family, I was already <clears> dealing with fact that there wasn't family around anymore <laughs> there wasn't a sister in the house so to go and see family it's a tr it's always been traveling and then to not be able to travel to go and see them that was a bit of a, a wrench and a, and a struggle um but that's family i would have felt that same wrench and struggle over a friend that i hadn't seen in you know five six years or mm -hmm. such like um and like church is such a, a relationship orientated place. Like I'm, some of the stuff I'm going to be teaching, uh, I think the Bible is all about relationship, full stop. Yep. So missing that community coming together, because um, it's integral to us as Christians to be building each other up, to be serving each other, to be um, a, about each other. We're not meant to be alone ever. Yep. Um, it was the first thing that God said, this isn't good. It's not good that man should be alone. Um, right. But yeah, but you and I, I think, I think our relationship was really forged in that time. Because mm -hmm. um, we're in, in a situation where it is just the two of us. We became a bubble. Yep. And I think maybe some of the, the grittier stuff about who we are and what we were expecting from the relationship and where we were going kind of came out in that time as well. Because quite early on, early on in that um, period, we were talking about, you know, meeting parents and mm -hmm. pieces like that. 
And again, from the Christian marriage perspective, like Chris and Lisa were talking about, Lisa was saying about not being unequally yoked and really testing Chris as to where he stood and things. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, um, it was something that I too had to struggle with. Uh, and not all struggles bad. It, it's it's the things that you have to, it tests where you're at in terms of relationship with the Lord and and he was a potential spouse at the time. It's like, are we going to be equal in this relationship? Is it going to be a, um, are we going to be equally yoked? Are we on the same page as it were with church in the future and all those things? And to be put in this situation where it's just you and I having to work these things out. I mean, it wasn't comfortable at the beginning, was it? But we came through and actually probably very, very good for us in our relationship at that time. Well, surely if we can, you know, like you were saying there about a lot of, a lot of marriages uh, got tested during that time. Um, and, you know, if we can, if we can become accustomed to each other and remain joyful and happy and positive and um, build something during what could be a staying as time. Um, and let, let's, uh, I'll make no bones about it. Uh, I was not at my best because I got ill in the beginning of 2020 and uh, as it continued like for long enough. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's, uh, I couldn't even do a lot around the house a lot of the time because I was just bed bound a lot of the time. Yep. No, and um, there was heaps of factors there that could have totally blown us apart, um, and it didn't. Okay. So I think, I think, because obviously we heard about your story last time, and and there was a testing in that. But I think with COVID, and I think interesting the the lack of friends, because I think friends can be a distraction. At the same time, the enemy, as we know, even in your story, is whispering in their ears to whisper into your ears. So, so there is no genuine, you know, thoughts are being planted in your head. Whereas with you guys, you had to see each other raw. You had to see each other. Interesting, you made the, the Genesis reference there. But you see each other naked. You see each other's souls. You know, I think, you know, when I say naked, I don't mean clothing. I think today everyone's wearing a mask. Everyone's an identity. We talked about this before. Uh, and it's all false. And I think from the friendship perspective... The lack of people around you allowed you to focus on the quality and not the quantity. And, and it's interesting that both of you got what the Lord wanted you to gain from that. So Kirsty got her opportunities for testing. And I think with you, Andy, it's that kind of knowing someone went through everything with you that you would consider not your best of times. That develops trust. Because you know that the person knew me and loved me in not my best of time. I wasn't wearing a mask. I wasn't impressing her. I wasn't just up in my John Travolta disco outfit. <laughs> I was planting that thought in people's heads. Um, <laughs> you know, and I think... Sorry? I think, I think that's the mark of real friendship, though. Like proper friendship yeah. is... Uh, you, you know people in, in their worst of times or their best of times. And that is a friend to me, is the person who... Actually, it wouldn't matter what you said to them mm -hmm. or what you told them or yep. what you, let's say, confess to them. They're not going to think of you any less mm -hmm. or yep. actually think of you any better. They're not going to be, um, what is it, kind of impressed by your your mask, but nor are they going to be um, disgusted. Offended. With, yeah, 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 um, well, offences now. Yeah. But you're going to say something else, really. Yeah, but I've forgotten it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I think that's another thing is when your your best friend slash wife husband can finish your sentence and pick up the things you left off. That's another good sign. But moving forward, then, so so now that you're married Christians in ministry, um, I do come across Christians, especially in the area I live, um, where we have got some we've got all sorts of denominations, but some are very traditional and they are happy to sort of meet with non Christians and have them come to services, but they they won't associate with them. Um, they, they certainly wouldn't fellowship with them. Um, where where do you stand on that? The kind of uh, if you're not Christian, you're not our friends. Um, 
well, what's unique about the crofting, I think, is it's put us into a relationship with a lot of people who we wouldn't associate with, mm -hmm. apart from the crofting. So, like, there's now folks who we can call on to give us a hand with bits and pieces who we're building relationship with, who we'd never have been in contact with had we been not crofting. Um, and... I mean, we started off by saying that there's kind of a bartering system and uh, uh, I've got this, have you got this? And that culture is still um, quite prevalent yeah. uh, in the village when we're here. Um, we're, we've been down the road to pick up something for the lambs and they've been up to us to mm. pick up something else and we've got the loan of this from somebody and they've got the loan of that. And um, if we do this for you, could you do this for us? And this kind of community relationship thing um i think that's exciting uh, one thing that is really on my heart with the crofting as well is to be a, like a resource in the community oh. um and we believe it's part of ministry really is to have something that's real and tangible to be able to bless others mm -hmm. with yeah. i mean we started the honesty box which brings people to to the door basically looking for eggs mm -hmm. and looking for whatever else we might end up putting in there and you stand there and have a conversation with them for 10 minutes and I mean the house here is a family home from Andy's family mm -hmm. your granny was born here so people know the family so yeah. let's come and have a nap oh your uncle so-and-so or your, your granny <laughs> or and all these connections with people um that I mean, I, I personally love that because I moved around an awful lot during my life. So that <laughs> kind of family root is all over the place. Yeah. You know, um, I haven't got a family home per se, but I'm living in a house now and in a home that's generations in the family, which is beautiful to me. I, I love that. Yeah. So it's like you say, I mean, even the your community, it's not so much feeling like friendships, it's feeling more like family. Yeah. yeah. And perhaps perhaps that's something that we, uh, I mentioned about my tears, that I have sort of family, friends and acquaintances. I keep, keep stressing this, I know it's keep coming up a lot in this episode. But acquaintances are close people, but they're, they're more likely going to be in for a season and that's it. Um, whether it's through the workplace or they could be your neighbour or it's someone that you, you just go to social things with. Um, but friendship probably is nearer to becoming family. And I know that I think someone else was teaching the other week about the fact that often um, friends can become more than family. And if you think about yourselves, you met as strangers who became friends, who became family. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that obviously the one thing is, coming back to the Christian message in all this, you know, we are one family in Christ. And I think that's that's something that's probably missing. And I know that other people that have sort of questioned me about, like you, Kirsty, um, for ministry, I mean, I've got quite a few elderly people that come with their mobile phones because they want to get prints where I am. There's a print shop next door. Uh, and they don't know how to, you know, family willingly send them these images of grandchildren and great grandchildren, but they don't know what to do with it. And a mm -hmm. lady the other week said, you know, I feel really awkward coming here to you. You know, I know you're a minister and you sit here doing this. I said, hey, listen, it's just modern ministry for a modern age. You you come and I, I meet your needs. Now, I would consider these people acquaintances. I've got to know them. They know me. But that's the point. I think as Christians, we probably should be showing what it is to be Christian. We have this family of ours. And uh, the best way to, to not exactly sell it, but the best way of promoting what we have is to simply share it with people that are, are not Christians. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like you're doing the same. It's uh, You're not really looking at, well, what's your, your belief at this point? Because, in fact, even, even another minister I talked to the other week, I said, it's one thing to stand around evangelising and doing the more traditional route, but friendships and relationships people are more willing to go well you know what i'm quite interested in what you do and why do you do that what are them songs that you sing and and don't you miss pop music and don't you it's much easier to have people be led to the lord through our examples and our friendships than it is simply to stand there and start saying hey well listen you know you should be saved and you should do this and you should come to church uh you know what's your views on that then well 
that's my exact thoughts, um, to be to be quite honest. I mean, um, for long enough, I wasn't a Christian, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, you'd always get those people um, who'd come along and they wouldn't know your name, they wouldn't know anything about you, and they wouldn't care about you, you know. Uh, do you know Jesus? And um, you don't know left from right. No. Um, and, and then, and then, you know, um, why why do you want me to know your God and you don't even give a hoot about me? And then if I say yes, you go away and I never see you again. Um, I mean, for me, it's uh, it's it's friendship, it's relationship. Um, nobody can notice how how we nobody can notice if we're different in the world or if we manage our struggles differently or if we're still joyful, hopeful, happy, unless they're about us and they know us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so there's a, I'm not saying there's not space for, you know, if I hear something from the Lord, I'm saying it and that is it. Um, but there's also a deepening, you know, if you, like community, we, we become around them more and more and we do things more and more and we get used to them more and more. And then maybe you'll see something in them and you're like, oh, you know, uh, I don't mean a weakness, but, you know, there's, you, you can say that the Lord's highlighting something to you because you've yeah. spent a little bit of time and you've got to know that um, their psyche, their will, if you want, their emotions and, and then you've got something to work with more, you know, and and it, it, it's much more, there, there's a, a better atmosphere for questions then, you know, mm -hmm. proper heartfelt questions. Um, well, it's true. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? When you think about it, a sales rep, the, the priority, because I used to train this as coaching, and that's why I stopped doing that kind of work. But the idea is a sales rep needs to be your best friend in minutes. That's part of the trick. It's, it's I need to win your trust. I need to make you think I'm just like you. I'm one of you and we're on the same page. But that's the point. Like you said, it's false. Now, people like you and I, I think we see through it so easily when others don't. But when we come to the thing about meeting people, I mean, I do. I'm not going to lie. I'll say it openly to everyone. I love people. I don't necessarily love spending all my time with people. But I do love people. I love meeting interesting people. If I can, if I had to meet you guys at one o'clock um, this afternoon, I'd have, I'd have got there half an hour early just so I can people watch. People mm -hmm. are fascinating. But if you mm -hmm. love people, the next step is to ask them questions. And as you already know, Favourite Friday, I mean, I'm already aware that there's some guests on my channel said, I don't think I can do what you're doing. And I said, why? They said, because you literally just walk up to strangers and start asking them questions. I said, mm -hmm. well... It looks like that, but I actually go and actually have a conversation. I, I get a conversation going and say, look, can I actually interview you? Can you are you willing to do this? Now, for the ones that you do see, there's probably three or four that you don't see. But I still got a bit of time getting to know that person. I found out a little mm -hmm. bit about them. I go away and I say, thank you, Lord, for the people that I met today. And I hope I brought something to them as they did to me. So it's not always about what's on, on the, the program. And of course, the other thing is sometimes you're going to be, well, you know, bump into them later in life. And I think we've all had them experiences where we meet someone and we don't know why, but as you walk away, it feels like they're significant and you're going to meet them again. And then suddenly it happens. In fact, Pastor Greg is a good example. Perhaps when I next have a chat with him, we'll bring that in that we actually met probably six months before we formally got introduced. But at the time he had the same feeling that I feel like I know this guy but we never met. So the Lord has a funny way of bringing people together as he did with you guys. But I'm going to let you guys have the last say about friendship. Although I do think this is a topic that will be expanded on as we go forward. And I think Kirsty, I think your theme for this week is relationship bias. So we're, yeah, so this will all tie together. So go on guys, give us a, an encouraging finishing word about friendship for our viewers. Putting you on the spot. No, it's good. No, well, a verse um, from Romans chapter 12 came to mind uh, a wee while ago whilst we've been talking. Uh, so it's Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. 
if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And I think that, to me, is uh, the crux of all relationships in terms of our responsibility to other people. As much as it depends on me, mm -hmm. I'm going to live at peace with the neighbour across the road, the, the person I've met never before in my life, um, with the folks who I've known a long time and might get on my wick a little bit. You know, this, as much as it depends on me, live at peace with all men. Um, but well, we've probably got a hundred stories we could tell of, of what friendship looks like. And elsewhere, it's there's a, there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Um, and mm -hmm. very often that's, we say that's Jesus, that's the Lord. And you can't have a, a relationship any closer than somebody who is literally living with you, inside you, as a part of your life so completely. Mm -hmm. The second only relationship you can have to that is your spouse mm -hmm. and Andy, Andy's a friend to me who is sticking far far closer than a brother mm -hmm. that's from me anyway anything else for you? Um, I remember what came to my mind was scripture about you know if, if you if you love the Lord and you see one of the wee ones needing a glass of water can you give him a glass of water um, you cheat, you cheat people. You know, you cheat people lovingly and uh, as if you care, because you've got if you if you've got a relationship with the Lord, then everybody's important. It doesn't matter, you know. Even we're not meant to hate, but say you hate people, well, they're his beloved little children, and. Everything's a relationship, everything's a second chance, everything is serving the Lord. Um, you know, people complaining about the noise of the wee kiddies. And, oh, the Lord said, don't do that. Love them, love the mm -hmm. wee kiddies. Who cares if they're noisy? Um, and that's, that's my word of relationship there. Excellent. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. We've got so many opportunities, and it's all, at the end of the day, worship. Amen. Well, thank you for that wise word there at the end, Andy. And as always, we've run out of time again, but it's been a, a privilege to have you back on, and thankfully our signal stuck with us. So thank you again. I'm hoping you'll join us again soon. Is that a, is that a thumbs up again? <laughs> <laughs> excellent well thank you all and obviously we'll see you later in the week Kirsty. so i want to thank again thank you to them for <laughs> sorry i cut them off there that's what friendship is it's knowing that they won't be offended <laughs> but it's been great to have them on and find out exactly where they stand on their position with friendship at this point but remember the saying goes the enemy of my enemy is my friend now there's some truth in that but Jesus said something better. He said, love your enemy. Now everyone we meet is a stranger with the potential to be a friend. But sometimes the people that are standing against us or react to us or seem offended, perhaps we should take a moment to see them the way Jesus did, as a person in pain, needing help, possibly needing a friend. And who knows, one day that friend could be your spouse. God bless. If you were blessed by this video, why not give it a like? Also, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos.